All right, Doug Johnson, Thunder Road Show here. Uh, today we're gonna show you what it takes to fix a rear main seal leak on a 6.0 liter. I got a 1500 HD. This is my daily and my tow rig. I haul the Thunder Wagon with it. And uh, it's leaking like a sieve. So <clears throat> we're gonna show you what it takes to fix the oil leak on a 6 liter. We're here at Gary's Transmissions in Katy, Texas. You can see the sign right there behind me. And Curtis and his guys are gonna do this. They're gonna knock it out quick and we're gonna show you all the work that it takes to change out the rear main seal by pulling the transmission transfer case. Okay, you can see that was my leak from today. That's water, but this is the leak from today. It's been sitting here about three hours, so it's nice and cool. All right, so here we're Curtis, Gary's transmission. Curtis Gatsky. That's right. Uh, so we're gonna knock out this uh, rear main seal leak Rear main seal, oil pressure sensor, and uh, cam sensor. Cool, and this is Matt, he's gonna help out. So um, let's get started. We got it on the lift already, and we're gonna do uh, the battery first, safety always, first. Always disconnect the battery first. Just your standard six liter, good running truck. Always get the dipstick out of the way. It goes for easy work whenever you're up in the air. Transmission's got to come all the way out on this pig. So they're going to lift it up. And we'll show you how bad the leak is here. And the problem is this pipe is going to have to come off. Front drive shaft, rear drive shaft will come out. Transfer case comes down and out. We're going to fix the leak that it possibly has here also. Yeah, it's a mess. You can see all the oil's been drained on it. You can smell it. Already did the valve cover gaskets. You can see how bad the leak is. And it's coming out. You can see all over the bell housing there. So this rear drive shaft is a two-piece, and it it's is. got a hub or a what do you call that? A carrier bearing. Carrier bearing in the middle. Yeah. Whenever the whole thing comes down, we'll check the U-joints. Okay. We'll check the carrier, the front rear U-joints. We'll check. There's a little bit of slack sometimes when you take off. I could feel yeah, it. But it's not there. Okay. This is good. Good. Carrier bearing's good. But it's got a big support that goes to the frame. Yeah. You didn't have the torsion bars. You could drop the transfer case and transmission. Right. We would be able to leave the whole thing together. That's the front suspension. <laughs> gets burned to replace them to replace them i don't know if you can see this yeah. to replace them to replace them you have to hit, hit this with a torch and whenever this glue inside heats up the glue comes out of both sides and then you can you can push the cap out oh. and then the newer style uh the the to keep the, to keep the new caps in you have to put inside clips instead of the Original outside you normally see from any other vehicle out gotcha. there.
Uh, transmission fluid. Transfer case is even darker. It's hard to tell if it's a dirty job. Curtis is using a pick to open up the roof book cables so that it doesn't break all the clamps. So I can put them all right back where they belong. That's what turns your four wheel drive on. Puts it in the different ranges. Mm -hmm. And it also tells you. This is the speedometer right here. Okay. Input and output speed. And the pernendal switch is up front, up on the transmission, right? Yes. Yes. And it's it's already uh, disconnected from the transmission. It's still plugged in, but we don't we don't unglue these ones. So we just unbolt them. Take as much oil on it, they'd be lubed up. Just one side has that. Both sides. Oh, both sides. You'd already gotten your. No. Oh, it just slides. Once you on, get yeah. one off, you can slide it out towards the passenger side. Well, that is a filthy, nasty mess. You get a shot of everything. Okay. Together. 
all the nuts and bolts and everything. One piece. It always comes loose. So we're gonna clean that surface on the transfer case and we'll put silicone in between here and there. Uh, that works better than that cheap gas. It sure does. A whole lot better. You can tell this stuff just gets really brittle and breaks. It's, it's, it's like a cardboard paper. Okay, this is your indicator that. Uh, tells you your park, reverse, neutral, drive, manual one, two, and three. And it goes on the side of the transmission on this shaft right here. Okay, the same shaft that when you pull the lever. When you pull, whenever you pull the lever in the cab, yeah. this cable moves back and forth. Turns that. Turns that. Stick so I can get the last one after this one. You want to try to reach up there and get those bolts pulled out? Getting it off the dowels is a pain sometimes. Oh, yeah. Come on. Doing this on your back would be oh hellacious. That would suck. It'd so take bad. you about a week.
time this comes down, I always check right here for cracks. This is the weak spot in the flywheel. Everything seems to be all right here. So this is the uh, messy pig leak. See that drip? Yep. That is your crank sensor, or I'm sorry, cam sensor. And then your oil pressure sensor is gonna be right next to it, to the left, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Right there, and it's nasty too. So that's why we go ahead and bought all of it. Mm -hmm. once, you're, once you're here, it's the same labor to get to both of those pieces. You can tell that all these bolts are wet, and that's, uh, there's a gasket that's behind here, and a lot of it's probably from this too. Yeah, that's that just dripping. That's crazy. And you can tell it's wet under here, and that's your rear main. And this is your crank. Yeah. Now you can look at the oil pan gasket too while you're down here, but mm -hmm. you got to start from the top and start. That's why I did the oil the valve cover gaskets first, which were leaking, and it slowed it down some. Okay. Yeah. This. This up here is definitely, a, yeah. definitely an Good issue. Good thing we got that cam sensor. That's right. So, all right, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. All right. and, uh... See all this drippage? That's a good indication that that seal back there is bad. Okay. Yeah, you can see it pouring out. Mm -hmm. It's bleeding. So I paid $4,500 on the truck. It had a miss in it. It was a number one cylinder had a cracked valve spring. $4,500 for this truck? Yeah. And I got, I put an injector in it first, trying to fix it, and then, God, look at that. That's the factory seal. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go over there, I'll show you how to knock this out. Okay. What are you doing over here? I'm gonna take the original seal out of the uh, rear main engine plate. You gotta have your cabinets, your you wash bins, there. just in the right spot. Your special screwdriver for that. Regular in the old flathead. Now it's out. We always wanna look at this surface right here to make sure there's no gouges in it. And then whenever we get back over to the truck, we're gonna look at the, the crank and make sure there's no groove in it from the old seal. What do you do if there's a groove in it? Uh, we hit it with M3. A uh, little 3M? Yeah, yeah, 3M. Emery uh, cloth type stuff? Yep, that's right, 400 grit. Cool. We're gonna throw this in the, in the cooker with all the other parts. Go ahead and put the nasty crop over in there. Hang it on the Christmas tree. If we hear any noise, we need to open it up and re recirculate everything. Or cam sensor, I keep getting those mixed up. What is that, a 10 millimeter? Yes. The 10 millimeter 
wrench. <clears throat> the easiest way to do it is a ratcheting wrench. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to put some persuasion on it. Looks like there's oil inside the plug. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see it whenever it gets down. Yeah, to do this from the top side, you have to take the intake manifold off. That's right. More labor hours than pulling the transmission in it. I believe it is. Nobody's home. Nope. And this is that seal that's bad that's pushing all that oil past it. I don't know if you can get this on the camera, but this seal is supposed to be round, but it's flat all the way around. And that's where the oil pushes past. This is your oil pressure sensor. And it takes a special socket. And I believe Matt's going to find a special socket right now. Take this. Had to go to O'Reilly's and okay. grab this special socket that fits that oil pressure sensor. And now here, here's where here's the trick. Leverage, gotta, leverage comes in. An old jack handle on a flipped on a, a, a ratchet that folds down. Swivel ratchet. So that $11 socket from O'Reilly's saves the day. You always want to make sure that that gasket comes with the part. Yeah, that's if you leave, the If you leave that old gasket up there, your new part will leak. Since it has the aluminum washer, there's no need for any thread locker or anything. This is the cam sensor. Put some grease on it so that O-ring doesn't get messed up when he goes back to yellow. Right? Yeah, those sharp edges on the block will cut it. Yeah, they're in. They're in the. Uh, no, they're uh, just blow them off. I scrubbed them. So Curtis, why does your ringtone for your girlfriend a cam? Because she's banging. <laughs> <laughs> Is she going to approve of that when she hears this? Video? I'm sure she will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a screenshot of your phone to prove to the people watching that she's banging. <laughs> Just blur, just blur the name. All okay. Right? <laughs> you really are going to have to text me a picture, a good picture. Yeah, of her. yeah. I'll send you a picture of her and <laughs> I'm She's beautiful. Both. Yeah. I can see that. It's my wife's little sister. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, so this is how this situation works. That's right. Are y'all best friends? Close to it. Close to it. <laughs> good buddy. Yeah. Got no issues. No. That's Work nice. together, drink beer together, and that's it's all, all in the family. That's exactly. right. Yeah, well, well, we ain't trading. <laughs> we ain't <swapping. laughs> Not yet, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> There's always that possibility. You uh, know it? <clears throat> yeah. So we always want to do the bottom first to pull the pan flat. Okay. Instead of sticking it in place. Instead of sticking it in place and then trying to force down, because once these are tight, the, the, the plate will not move down. You always have to pull the plate down and then go all the way around. Pull it on, you 
start from the bottom, start from the bottom and work your way up, crisscross. You get a one inch ex uh, extension. That should be Make sure it's flush all the way around. Good. All right, let me get closer for this. Looks good. Good. All right, so we're going with some more silicone. You made that chain fit as a hat band? I did. <laughs> where'd you find that chain? Uh, scooter. And where'd you find the bullet? The bullet? That's custom. <laughs> the chain I got from electric scooter. And then the sprocket is from electric scooter too. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah.